What we are seeing at Tesla right now is an example of how effective Elon Musk can be when he gets mad. Earlier this year, Musk gave his 4680 battery team an ultimatum. Fix the problems and cut the costs or the entire 4680 program will be shut down. This is how Tesla's battery team responded. What we are reporting on now is a breakthrough in Tesla's 4680 battery manufacturing that has been hinted at for a while now. We knew that the company was working hard and making progress on cell production volume, while at the same time struggling with long-standing complications that prevented the 4680 from living up to the expectations set out by Tesla at their 2022 Battery Day event. But we also knew that change was coming. When Tesla began their first wave of corporate layoffs earlier this year, one of the biggest surprises was the departure of Tesla's senior vice president of powertrain and energy, Drew Baglino. This wasn't just another Tesla executive, this was Elon's right-hand man, a key player in all of the company's major events and milestones. This was a pretty clear indication that a major change in direction was required for Tesla's battery team. Drew's departure was reportedly followed up by Elon Musk issuing a stern ultimatum to his remaining staff. Either do the impossible or meet the same fate as the supercharging division. It's amazing what people can accomplish when you start threatening them. Now, just three short months later, Tesla is saying that they have produced 50% more 4680 cells in Q2 than they did in Q1, while at the same time reducing their cost of goods sold by a significant margin. At the time of this update, Tesla was producing enough 4680 cells to build more than 1,400 Cybertrucks per week, which works out to roughly about 100 million batteries in a year at that rate. This demonstrates that the production ramp is still very much in progress. They are not slowing down yet, and even more importantly, they write that in July, the company began testing a prototype Cybertruck with in-house produced dry cathode 4680 cells. Many years ago, in the fall of 2020, Tesla held a big event called Battery Day, and they showed off a fancy new battery cell design called the 4680. Not only was it much bigger and more powerful than the average cylindrical cell, it came with the promise from Tesla that their battery innovations would lower the cost per kilowatt hour of energy in their vehicles by 56%. And we all know that the battery is the most expensive part of an electric car, so this could easily pave the way for Tesla vehicles that were much cheaper without having to sacrifice performance or could achieve much higher performance without having to crank up the price. One of the key reasons that the 4680 battery never lived up to expectations was in the manufacturing process, or specifically, the dry battery electrode process. It's a technology that Tesla acquired in a buyout of a company called Maxwell back in 2019, and if successful, it would drastically reduce the size and cost of a battery production line, while also increasing the speed and volume of production. The inside of a cylindrical battery cell is essentially just long metal ribbons that are rolled up tight and placed inside a metal can. One ribbon for the positive side and one for the negative side. When you make a battery using the standard wet process, you add a bunch of liquid solvents to the ingredients to melt them together and roll everything out into a flat ribbon. Then you need to dry them back out again. This wetting and drying is time consuming, energy intensive, and adds the complication of dealing with a bunch of toxic chemicals and off-gassing. Now, if you could make a dry battery, then you'd eliminate all of that stuff from the manufacturing process. This proved to be a lot more complicated than Tesla had first believed. They did figure out how to make half of the battery in a dry process, the anode or negative side of the battery, which is good, but this was already the easier and cheaper side of the battery to manufacture. It's mostly just a sheet of copper foil with graphite on top and a bit of silicon mixed in. But the much more complex and expensive cathode or positive side was more resistant to dry manufacturing. This is where all of the aluminum, nickel, manganese, and cobalt resides in the battery. Elon said in the past that dry cathode material was proving to be too hard for the machines to process, and it was damaging the metal rollers. Battery cathodes have to go through a process called calendaring. It's basically just compressing the powdered material down to a particular thickness. The cathode goes through rollers, where it's pressed out flat like pasta dough, and the dry cathode material was so hard that it started making dents in those rollers. 
Every time one of these machines would get damaged, it would take about 45 days for replacement parts to arrive and repairs to be completed. So that is a lot of downtime. We actually have this photo from Joe Tetmeyer that shows a close-up view of a damaged cathode roller. This is a hardened steel drum that's been chrome-plated to make a perfectly smooth surface on the exterior. We can see that the abrasion from the dry cathode material has separated the chrome plating from the roller, making it completely useless. From what we've been able to gather from insider reports, it took an upgrade to more expensive production equipment and a change in the manufacturing procedure for Tesla to finally overcome this costly hurdle. And now, according to what Tesla just released, after five years of blood and sweat, that dry cathode problem has finally been solved. Cybertruck lead engineer Lars Moravai said that Tesla has built the first validation Cybertruck with the dry cathode process. It's this particular truck captured by Joe Tetmeyer. It's been totally blacked out, and very importantly, Lars said that the battery cathodes in this truck were made on mass production equipment. These are not special prototypes. The machines that made these batteries are ready and waiting to make a hundred million more just like that. This means that by the end of 2024, all Cybertrucks will be produced with 100% dry process 4680 cells, and this change in manufacturing should allow the 4680 production volume to ramp up even faster than it is right now, making enough cells to build as many Cybertrucks as Giga Texas can handle. Of course, that's given the validation Cybertruck meets all of the real-world expectations that it's being put through right now, charging, discharging, temperature regulation, all of that fun stuff. The immediate cost savings here will be in cathode material. For the entire time that Tesla has been struggling with their dry cathode process, they have been buying cathode rolls from their battery supply partner, LG Energy. These are made in the traditional wet process, and they're good battery materials, but it means that Tesla is paying a markup so that LG can turn a profit. From what Elon Musk is saying right now, Tesla expects to exceed the competitiveness of their battery suppliers by the end of the year, meaning they'll be making a high volume of their own cathodes for a lower cost than LG can supply. If everything goes according to plan, this would make Tesla's 4680 the lowest cost nickel-based EV battery cell manufactured in the United States, which was the goal set out on battery day. The 4680 still won't be the cheapest battery on the market. Chinese producer CATL would still have a pretty significant cost advantage with their iron-based LFP battery, but those cannot provide the level of energy density and performance that Tesla can achieve with the 4680. Speaking of which, we should not be expecting to see any major upgrades to the Cybertruck battery performance anytime soon. The reason being that if Tesla has just mastered the dry cathode process with their existing chemistry, they won't be in any hurry to make any changes that might throw a wrench into that whole process. Not yet, at least. We saw this with the original 4680 cell that rolled out in a limited version of the Model Y in 2022. It was a dual motor variant with a structural 4680 battery pack, but it had much lower range than the regular dual motor Y for basically the same price. And that was due to a relatively low energy density from the first generation 4680 cell. And the main reason for that was in the dry process anode of the battery. When you get a Tesla with the regular Panasonic battery cells, there is a bit of silicon mixed into the battery anode. This allows more of the lithium ions to be stored in that side of the battery, meaning it can accept more charge. When Tesla first started making 4680 cells, they excluded the silicon from the anode chemistry just to keep it simple while they worked through the dry manufacturing process. Then with the 4680 V2 or the Cybercell, as it's currently used exclusively in the Cybertruck, Tesla added silicon back into the anode chemistry, which increased the energy density enough to get the Cybertruck range over 300 miles. So because history often repeats itself, we would expect to see Tesla do the same thing with their new cathode. Start simple to get the fundamentals straight, and then start pushing the boundaries. So if you are one of the many hundreds of thousands of people eagerly awaiting a Cybertruck of your very own, then hopefully you can rest a little easier knowing that the truck you'll eventually receive will contain the most advanced electric car battery in the world. And that is pretty cool.